Hi, it's me, Gabe Wolf here, and I'm interviewing the famous professor from MIT who won who won the Nobel Prize in 1990 for his work on quarks by the name of Dr. Jerome Isaac Friedman. I know that you got your Nobel Prize for your work on for your dis for the discovery of the quark. quark. Yeah. So explain to the people who are watching this video what the quark is and then why it's important. The yes. atom basically has electrons around a very tiny nucleus. They move around a, a, a very tiny nucleus. And the nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. And at one time we thought that protons and neutrons were fundamental particles. But now that we know that they're made up of even smaller particles called quarks, and the, uh, for example, the proton is two up quarks and one down quark, and the um, neutron. So the different types of quarks is up quark, down quark, charm quark, strange quark, top quark, and bottom quark. Very good. And, <clears throat> and they're all spin one half. And you know, the spin is like a, the properties of a spinning top, but we express them quantum mechanically. And <clears throat> quarks are extremely tiny. We call them point-like because they're so small that we can't even measure their size. We know they're there, but we can't even measure their size because they're too small to measure. And all we have is an upper limit on the size of a quark. And to give you an idea of, of how tiny that is, you know, if I take a carbon atom, you know, a carbon atom is very tiny, right? Yeah. It's much, much smaller than a virus, right? Of course it is. Okay. And make it the size of the Earth? Correct. I think, like, hmm, maybe a quark would, like, be the size of a car or something? No, it would be smaller than a quarter of an inch. Wow. Wow. And that's the upper limit in its size. So these things are very, 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 very tiny. Very so, small. and the electrons basically have the same size. Something we discovered just, I don't know, like a couple months ago, that pretty much proves why everything exists. Well, it's, which it, has it, to do with the Higgs field. That's right. The Higgs field. The Higgs field is actually a mechanism to uh, give fun particles mass. That's correct. That's correct. And um, sorry. Explain how it works. Sure. So think of the Higgs field like water in a way. And um, a photon is like a barracuda. It's streamlined and you know, zips right through the water. But then like some other particles, like I believe the top quark, are like um, a bit more like us. They're big and bulky and they don't, they're not so air streamlined. And the thing is, correct me if I, if I have to, if this, when you're p trying to push through, when you're big and bulky and you're trying to push yeah. through the Higgs field, you collect mass by these, the Higgs field, the water droplets are like the Higgs bosons. Uh, so the only thing I would add to your explanation is that it, instead of the difference in size, what it is a difference in, mass. in no in force. You see what happens is that it's think of it like uh, like molasses. Like particles like your molasses, like okay? And some particles have something like soap on them and they can slide through very easily. And others the the molasses sticks to them and slows them down. And so it's more like the force of the material on the particle that makes a difference. So how does that work? So the point is any particle which has zero rest mass has the speed of light. That, that's what Einstein showed. Yeah. Okay. So if any other particle goes through this molasses, it slows down, it no longer has the speed of light, and therefore it must have a rest mass. And it gains that, and it gets that rest mass by the Higgs bosons. That's <laughs> right, and the more it slows down, the bigger the rest mass. And that's the way it works. So it's the force between the molasses and the particle. 
but your your analogy was really quite good. Just the, th the, the reason for it, the reason is is that the cork, the top cork, and the uh, up cork basically have the same size. I was just coming up with eight. But it's I a know, nice, but it's, the, it's a nice metaphor. It's a nice metaphor. The top cork has a bit more mass. Yeah, it's a very nice metaphor, you said. So it's very, it's a nice explanation. So next is 